Hi everyone, this is a guest lecture for the Georgia Institute of Technology uh, in the US and the module or subject is CS2340 I believe. Today we're going to talk about uh, unit testing and how you might do that in a game produced with FXGL. So uh, for those who have not met me before, I am Almas, hi. Um, I am a senior lecturer in game development and I'm the head of the computing division at the University of Brighton. So today we're going to build a quick uh, demo in FXGL and we're going to see how we might do uh, unit testing with it. So this is the Maven POM file, which I'll just very briefly go through. FXGL version, uh, JUnit library that we'll be using for testing. And the rest is kind of trivial, it's just dependencies. This um, POM file will be available from the repository. Um, so if you just find the link in the description of the video, you'll be get, uh, able to get there and get the file as needed. Right, so uh, let's just quickly build a uh, demo so we can, we can run and then we'll um, see what we might turn that uh, into. Let's go with basic game app. Well, actually, I don't think we need any settings. So the game is going to be quite simple. We're going to have a rectangle, which is con control controllable by the player. And it will allow us to move around the level and collect some uh, so-called coins. These coins are going to be then once we collect the coins, I think they will allow us to break the barrier. How about that? And then we can then easily test um, the barrier breaking. So in terms of testing, there are a few things to note. You have your normal kind of unit testing, which is something that you're probably familiar with. And there are also different other types of testing. Um, such as integration and system. Depending on where you look, these might be defined differently. So keep that in mind. Unit testing or unit test is typically going to be testing a single unit of code operation, whatever that, that is in um, your code base. Typically in Java, that's a class. So a unit test would test a class. And depending on how you're designing that class, it may be a bunch of classes that together form um, a unit. In which case you will need to um, have a unit test that includes multiple classes, which is fine. We also have integration tests. These are going to test several units together uh, and make sure that they work well, uh, well, well, they work correctly integrated. And finally, there is the system test, which is going to combine all of these integration tests and essentially run through the entire application. You may um, have a search online. You might find slightly different um, definitions for those types of tests and there are certainly more types of tests than just those three but it's much easier to think about them at a simplified scale so there's a smaller unit test large integration test and the big systems test so let's just have this uh, play in our game and let's on that player somewhere here and that should give us uh, something well actually no we, we need to attach the player to the game world normally you would do this uh, via an entity factory but I'm just building something um, really quickly so we can get to testing pit 
All right, so this is our player. Um, it's good enough. Let's have some input going uh, on key W. We need to extract the player reference here somewhere. And then we can move the player upwards, translate Y minus five um, in FXGL and in JavaFX, you've got a uh, Y axis going down, which means if you do a minus, that means you go up. So S is going down, A and D, these are going to translate the X value, minus and plus. So this will allow us to move our play around uh, in our game, just like that. Now what I'm thinking is, let's put a barrier uh, somewhere in the middle, which we're going to separate the left side from the right side, and the player can't go to the right side until they've collected all the coins. And there will be just two coins. That should be enough for our purposes. The coins are going to be very similar. Make coin. The type is going to be coin. Uh, let's make about 10, 10, and maybe red. So we're going to have red coins. Um, make coin. These are the coordinates. Let's go for something like that. And then finally, we'll need to make a barrier. It's going to be quite big, um, something like 600. It's going to be of color, I know, dark gray. Make barrier. Um, 400 and zero. So these are the two coins. Uh, nothing happens currently when we collide with them because we need to add uh, our collision handler and we've got the barrier in the middle. Now, when it comes to testing, um, it's common to see testing in business applications rather than in games. Because with business applications, you have a very specific um, set of requirements, uh, usually given by the client or whoever requested the piece of software. And then you write your test to match those requirements. So business logic is much easier to test uh, when compared to, say, um, game logic, which is intertwined with things like game play, uh, game feel, and so on. Uh, which are quite subjective and you know how do you define it plays smoothly for example uh, if you're playing a platform game so not a lot of games um, use testing they test a specific set of features and they're easy to test like core things things like automated builds maybe uh, core engine stuff like um, physics is something that can be made deterministic in games. But things like feel, aesthetics, these are usually tested by the QA department um, and people on that team will essentially play through the game and then see if there are any bugs. So from that perspective, 100% uh, testing in games is actually not necessarily a good thing. It could be even a bad thing if you're considering uh, rapidly changing requirements. So suppose you're building a level and you want to fully test that level in code automatically. And now the next day the manager says, well, scrap that level, we're going to build something different. So I've just wasted some time building tests for the level. And time is essentially money when it comes to uh, industry. So you don't want to lose money, obviously. But there are things you can test, and that's the, the things that we're going to uh, try and test um, in our little example. First of all, we're going to build the logic, which is collect the coins, get through the barrier. For that, we need physics. 
one collision begin between the types of player and coin. And we also want to check collisions between the player and the barrier. Let's import this so it's much clearer. So player and barrier, we don't really care about this object, but we want to move the player uh, further away. Translate x by minus 150. And remove the coin. So when we collide with a coin, the coin gets destroyed, or should do, uh, once we enable collisions. And when we collide with a barrier, we are going to be pushed back. So for collisions to work, we need to make sure that they are collidable. Uh, this method simply adds the collidable component to um, each of the entities. And that way, FXGL knows that these things can collide. So we collect the coins and we can't really go through the barrier because as soon as we collide with it, uh, it just pushes, up, pushes uh, the player back by 150. So to remove the barrier, we can add one to something inside the barrier saying, well, we've removed one coin, we've removed two coins. Now that it's two, Let's get rid of the barrier or make the barrier not collidable or something. When it comes to adding some behavior to an entity, you typically add a custom component. So I'm going to create a barrier component. I'm going to extend a component and it's going to have a method called is unlocked. Because if it is, we don't want to push the player back. And we might have a method called um, add, I know, or open. And then we pass the number of keys or something. And then we have um, number of, uh, yeah, let's call this some keys, it'll be zero. And then this just gets added to that. And then is unlocked is number of keys equals two. Now, it's not ideal because if this goes over or something. I know there, there are various ways this could break, but for the purposes of what we're doing, that should be fine. Because I don't think I'm going to add anything extra to this example to not complicate it. So the check that we're going to perform here is we're going to get a component, which we haven't attached yet, but we will do. And then we can check if this is unlocked. If it is, then we don't do anything. If it isn't, so we're negating the billion uh, result, then we have to push the player back. Every time a coin gets collected, we need to A, find the barrier entity, and B, open it by one unit. So we need to get the world in which the coin exists get world get um, singleton because we know that there is one barrier so we can say get singleton because there's only one we know it will contain this barrier component and then we're going to open it by one unit. So one coin, one key, two coins, two keys. Once uh, when it reaches two keys, it unlocks itself. 
and we just need to make sure we add the uh, barrier component to our make barrier uh, method. Let's try this. So what we're doing now is just manually testing it. We're just seeing if this works. So I can go through now. When we restart the game, I can't go through until I collect both things. Okay, cool. But suppose you don't want to do manual testing all the time. So how would you test this using a unit test? Now, first of all, there is a test directory uh, in a standardized Maven structure. But you'll see it's source main, source test. Inside here, you essentially just mirror the uh, package structure for various reasons, mostly related to how resources are handled. And then you name the class, the unit test class, the same name as the, te as the class that you're testing, and then you simply append the word test. We're testing barrier, so barrier component test. You then annotate your method, which is going to contain the testing code with the word or annotation test, which comes from here which is why we needed to include the JUnit libraries uh, at the beginning. Uh, public void test unlock, for example. So this method, where we're going to add a bit of code, is going to test how the unlock mechanic works for the barrier. We obviously need the barrier component so we instantiate it. And then we want to test is unlocked is true once we unlock it with two keys. Now there are various ways to actually write the assertions, uh, assertion methods. The one I prefer is um, coming from the Hamcrest library. So it allows you to somewhat nicely uh, write out your statement. Something like assert that this thing is true. You don't have to do this. There are ways to do the same thing pretty much. You can do something like assert true, and then you can simply pass this thing in. But when it comes to things like strings, for example, you would do this and then you would add the string here. So it actually reads quite nicely when you're reading it. Assert that barrier component is unlocked and it is true. So you're matching the left-hand side with what is supposed to be on the right-hand side. This is the actual thing. This is the expected thing. Now, if you, we run this now, this will fail because there are two coins or two um, keys that we need to unlock this. However, we only have one, or rather zero. So what we would do is open it once. We know that this needs to be false, so we would test that it is actually false. And then we would do something like this. Open it one more time with a new key, and then we're going to say that this should be true. And this should now pass. Typically, when you're writing a unit test, you're going to be using mostly uh, the methods that are available in the class that you're testing. Because if you need to use something else, then it 
just changes the test level. Um, and I mean, it could be fine if you're doing some integration testing, you're testing how multiple units come together. Alternatively, it could be bad if, you're, if you have to use something else in order to test only this unit, because that means you have some dependencies, uh, potentially those that you don't want. And it goes back to software architecture and design and how you need to design your classes in a way that they don't depend on other classes or they depend on abstractions rather than concrete implementations. Um, if you're interested in that kind of thing, then look out uh, SOLID, the SOLID principles, S-O-L-I-D. So this would be a unit test. How would we make this an integration test? would be the next logical question. Uh, and before we do that, I'm just going to emphasize that unit tests are there to test really small things. <clears throat> As you saw, we didn't need to instantiate the game. We in fact didn't need anything else, just this class, right? So the fact that this class uses FXGL or there is a JavaFX component there, whether there's a player or coins, it has nothing to do with what you're testing. And if that assumption is true, then this is great. <clears throat> because that means there are no dependencies. You can test your classes separately. Um, and this is where flexibility comes in. Imagine you're working on a thousand class project. It has thousand classes. How do you test them all together and how do you modify them together if they're all intertwined? Now, test integration would be when we start looking um, at a different scale. So what we want to do is essentially do something like this. So we can have a player, have a coin, or maybe we can have just a collision handler uh, and then simulate the collision as if what would actually happen in the real game. Because We've only tested it in terms of the unit test. We know the class works, but what we don't know is whether it's going to continue working when other things talk to it. In this way, the way it's currently written, it's nice in terms of the DSL, domain specific language. It's easy to read, easy to write but not easy to test because it, it has some, um, it uses some static things. Static things are usually difficult to test. So what we're going to do is slightly rewrite this using a handler. So player, coin, collision handler. So we're going to expand what, we're, what we've done. Instead of this, I'm going to talk to the physics world and then add a new player coin collision handler. And now we have this class in a separate, well, this functionality in a separate class. It has a uh, method that is accessible from the outside, it's protected which means it will be accessible in a subclass or in the same package. You'll note that our test class is in the same package as the production code. So bottom line is we can call this method. Whereas in here, it was in side of a more complex class. So we would need to actually instantiate the game 
the FXGL game engine, the JarFX rendering platform, just to make sure that our barrier works correctly. That is usually a sign of uh, poor design. Sometimes it just has to be that way because the problem is complex. But in our case, it allowed us to extract this into a separate class, which we can uh, unit slash integration test. Uh, and what we need is a coin It's not the entity that I needed. The entity should be coming from the FXGO library. That one. Now, coin needs to be given a type that it's a coin. So you'll notice that we need to do something here. In our game, we did, we did that and um, this is not available to us in the test method. We could make this also available, but for a to give you a variety um, of implementations, we're going to do this uh, manually. So coin one, this is coin two. We need the play entity. Set type player. We need um, our barrier entity. So you're now seeing that we're writing something that is a bit more complex than this one. So there is there should be a notion that this is just testing one thing. So it, it should by definition be simpler. This is now testing multiple things combined together, which is why um, integration tests are sometimes even more important, particularly in the larger systems. This is the barrier, and we need to add them to some game world. World add entities, let's add all of these things. Coin, coin, and barrier. So they are part of the same world. The barrier also needs uh, this barrier component because that's the thing that we're testing. Let's have a reference to it so we can query it. Right, and here, goes the actual test. So what are we testing? Essentially, we're testing the same thing. We want to make sure when the collision handler fires twice, well, when the player collects two of the coins, this is where get, uh, things get interesting because we don't actually have the game. We only have parts of the game. Uh, then this thing should happen, right? When we collected the thing. So handler, new, uh, player, coin collision handler. And let on collision begin, player coin one. So the game should think at this point that we've collected the first coin. And then we collect the second coin. And if you kind of want a thorough check, you may wish to do something like this. Kind of do a pre-condition um, type thing. So that you know that is unlocked, is false at this stage, and becomes true at this stage. Now let's run this and see if this works. Yep, the test passed. We can also run base, uh, both tests, something like that. And all the tests are passing, which is good. And this more or less completes uh, what we've been trying to achieve. So part of our game is now testable because we needed to make some changes. 
And because of these changes, not everything um, can easily be tested that way, which is why sometimes it's just much more beneficial from the industry point of view to simply not add tests. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's a decision that needs to be made by um, senior management typically. So in this video, we looked at creating a simple game demo um, in FXGL. And we also looked at a few different types of testing and how they might be used um, in a business application or in a game. Though in both of these types of applications, they're going to be used in a different way. And not every application um, benefits to the same extent from test-driven development. So on that note, if you have any questions, you are very welcome to um, leave comments in the video. Alternatively, you can ask your tutor, who will then email um, your questions to me, and I'll answer them when I'm available. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see uh, more of these sessions with students from other institutions later on. Bye-bye now.